Well, let, let me tell you what. This is, uh, I want to share a couple of things, which I believe they are very important. Uh, oh, by the way, some of you have not seen me. I'm, I'm the founder of this church. I've been 36 years. I, I got married the same year. I came from the mission field. I was in the mission field for six years. I was in the mountains of Guatemala uh, and with the natives there. I was like two and a half years. Then I passed by through Mexico and I went to Belize. 1985, the Lord told me that I to come to Miami. Of course, I'm Cuban. Of course, you see that I'm Cubano. <laughs> and uh, my parents were there, so, well, just came to Miami and I started the church. I met Mary and I, and she, you know, she, 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 I really, was a year before, it was in 84, 94, I went to preach because I used to come every year to get some money to be able to, to maintain my work in the, in the mission field. So I used to visit several churches. So I came to a church uh, that the pastor was Bobby Cruz and Richie Ray. These were salsa players in the world, tremendous at the time, which I used to follow. I used to be a musician. I used to have a group. And wow, uh, was really, they were an inspiration musically. And then they received the Lord and they opened this church. So I visited that church. My wife had been there for a month. And she had received the Lord just a month. Why did she go to that church? Because she was, she was Cuban, but she was raised in Puerto Rico. So when they invited her to this uh, church, she knew about Richie Ray, but because everybody knew about them, that they had received the Lord. So she went to see them, and she received the Lord. So when I went there, and she saw me, she just fell for me. <laughs> but why do you laugh? You're in there telling you. I didn't always look like this. <laughs> but, no, no, she really, she really, you know, she was, oh my God, who's that Cubano? You know, so, I, ha I had long hair because, you know, while I was in Belize, there was a lot of mosquitoes. I looked like a hippie, but I wasn't a hippie. It's just that I had that because the mosquito wouldn't bite me. So uh, she saw me and she says, we start going out. And just writing letters and all that. Of course, she wrote me a letter that she lost that after she didn't want it. Because she wrote me and she says, it doesn't matter if I have to go with you under a bridge. I don't, it doesn't matter if I got to go to the mission field. You have not yet made up your mind. You're going to open a church here in Miami, but I'm going to follow you. But then she just disappeared that letter. Because she's even afraid of the, what do you call it? Oh, she's afraid of frogs. And what is the other that you're afraid? And lizards. Can you imagine going to, she lied that she was going to follow me in the mission field. <laughs> but whatever it is, she just threw that letter away. But I came in 85, and we started really, you know, connecting. And uh, I started in there in the, what park was it called? The Tamiami. Tamiami Park there in the 107. Coraway and 107. 107. And uh, they gave me a space. And I raised the tent. And wow, it was definitely, that started Alpha and Omega. And the Lord has really blessed me a lot. And I'll tell you one thing. I, I started this service not too long ago. Well, yeah, a couple of years. So now, I'm really declaring, because I've been, you know, the Lord has really, the services in Spanish are packed. And this has been a blessing. And even though now, because of the, the, the pandemic, many, I'm not coming, but they are. They they watch it through the through the internet, and I want to bless you so you will multiply yourselves in this business, in this church, the English service. We have a message of faith, and a message of believing that God is doing new things for us. And simply, I just want you to realize you have a responsibility. Like we have a responsibility of feeding you, you have a responsibility as you are fed. And strengthen to do what you must do. Amen? And it's what? You know, the pastor does not uh, give birth to sheep. You, sheep, give birth to sheep. So, just, uh, I just want to tell you, God has been good to the church. And there is a blessing in this church. And everybody, 
that comes here, God has, or God has a plan. The point is that we unchain or unblock the plan that God has that sometimes we have been uh, hindered from the continuation of whatever God. You have a destiny. You have a destiny. Uh, we all have a destiny because we all have a purpose. And since we all have a purpose, if God gave you a purpose on this earth, then he has a route for you to take. Because for what? To complete that purpose. That route is called destiny. He has a destiny for you, but it's not the destiny like we know about the destiny. In the world, we know with destiny means that things are going to happen, whatever is going to be, whatever is going to be. But no, 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 with God. God plays a destiny, but he's placing a destiny in our hands, and he gives us free will to choose. If he wouldn't have made us to choose, we would go in that route with no problem at all. But since God wants to, God has, everything God has done is because of love. So he wants that love to be returned to him, so have to be willingly. He died willingly. Jesus died willingly. So he, that's why I say God loves us first. So now he willingly wants you to accept his destiny of obedience because it's the best for you. But now we have to choose. But you have a destiny, which of course the enemy doesn't want you to continue on it. So he will lie to you, present uh, areas of According to say, of pleasure, so whatever it may be, that your flesh will be fulfilled. But as you do that, you usually deviate from that route or destiny because the devil has a destiny for you. But we have to understand that we have a destiny from God. And even though sometimes because of a stupidity, we come out of that destiny, we declare that we return. You hear? Because that's what your blessings are. That's what our blessings are. And uh, better if you don't leave, uh, you don't deviate at all. Better if you continue on, but that's difficult. That's difficult. Uh, nobody's perfect. It's only with me and a couple of people. You know what? <laughs> so everybody misses it. But the point is the sincerity. Say sincerity. The sincerity of recognizing the missing, whatever you miss, your error recognizing it, and with sincerity, repent. I mean, if you, it does not matter what you have missed it on. Whatever you missed it, if you are sincere in recognizing it and desiring to leave that away or shun that away, I'm telling you, God will always forgive you and will place you back in the route that before you were born, he had for you. Give it a little hand. Did you receive all that? Well, none of that was here. I just know for, this is for somebody. I don't know why. But listen, I just got a couple of things I want to show you, mothers. But, but many of the things you share with a mother is the same for the father. Because the truth is that, okay, we have to admit. You like my time, man? Gracias. We, we have to admit that, and some people don't like this, but you don't like this because your children are small. God has, the children belong to God, not to you. God has allowed you to have children that you will train them for him. Why do you say that? Well, wait a while. Because now when your children are small, you say, these are my children. And in a way they are. They are yours to train, but they are truly God's because they are free. Why do you say that? Because they are going to leave you like you left your mother and father. You remember how disobedient you were? It's the same thing. It comes a time that the children will leave their parents, even because they got married, even because they went to college, or even because they, they fall in sin or they get away from you. So, talking about the sin nature and the situation that we have, the probability is that sin is the one that will defer you or take you away from your parents or whatever it may be. It depends how much you train your children. 
I said, because they're going to leave anyway, but we don't want them to live in sin. And if they left in sin, that they would return quick. Because we love our children. So our responsibility is to train the children of God that he has placed in our hands. And you that are young, and you say, but I'm not even married. You are going to be married, man. Listen, listen to what I'm saying because your turn will arrive. And it's tremendous that you already have the mentality that you are a trainer for the children of God. That when you are, everybody says, I want my children, not everybody, but most normal people want their children to be better than their parents. How many of you want your children to be better than you and to have more than you? That's the way it is. But you know what's going to confirm that? It's going to confirm that with the word that you will inject in their hearts. This is extremely important. Extremely important. Say extremely important. Say, I'm a trainer for the children of God. Wow, give yourself a hand. Tremendous. So with that mentality, you know, we got to know that God has called you to be a, tra a trainer. You're a trainer. Look at Psalm 78. Go to Psalm 78, verse 5. Praise the name of Jesus. He says, 78, 5. I'm going to go all the way to 7. For he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel. He commanded, say commanded, commanded. You know what commanded is? He gave an order. God is giving an order. Sometimes we read just like this. When you hear something that he commands, it's an order. This is a military expression. They command so, this is for us. Because when he talks about Israel here, he's talking about his people. At the time was Israel. Now there is no Greek or Jews anymore. Everybody's the same. Everybody got to enter from the same door. The door is, you know what the door is? Jesus says, I am the door. So it doesn't matter you are Jew or you are African or you are whatever you are. You have to enter through that door. So when, it, but this time here, when it talks about instruct, when you hear God's instructing Israel, sometimes it's the nation itself. There are specific laws, or not specific laws, but a specific uh, commandments and a specific uh, rules and a, uh, and a specific uh, uh, promises for, it, for the nation. But in many instances, when it talks about Israel or Jacob, he's talking to his people that it happens that now you are. So then you got to see in this one that says Israel, he's talking to me or he's talking to the nation. But you will see as you continue reading that he's talking to you. You are his people. Say, I'm God's people. Do you believe that? If you believe that, you don't know what you're saying. When, you, when you're saying, I am God's people, you're saying that I belong to God. And you are automatically, without even realizing it, declaring that God is responsible for you. Oh, my God. Do you see? You receive this revelation. Say, I receive it. When you say, I'm, I belong to God, I'm God's people, I belong to God, God then realizes that you know that he's responsible for you. In other words, there are doors that are not being no door. Just that statement could happen that doors will open that have not opened up to this time because God, you, you could shake heaven if you had the revelation of what the words come out of your mouth. So when you say that you are God's people, that you belong to God, you are saying God is responsible for me. When God hears that, that's what he wants to hear. It's not that you just put it in his hands. He expects you to get to someday in your life to realize that he's responsible for you. So you may, I don't know where you're going to receive anything I've said here or I will say. But if you receive that only, I'm opening an area of your life that you perhaps have never opened. And I'm telling you, you belong to the God of the universe because you are his child. Glory to God. Oh.
Tremendous. Hey, I said tremendous. Tremendous. Say tremendous. Tremendo en español. Tremendo. Uh. Hallelujah. Powerful. Powerful. Where am I? I love it, man. I love it. I love it. I love it. Great. 78. Yeah, I know 78. You look good. You look good. Uh, I lay that off. You get up. Get up. Get up. Submit. Look how pretty my wife. Man, I'm telling you. Yeah, she's madly in love with me. <laughs> so, I got to read that. Let me finish. Don't, let me concentrate. Okay, Psalm 78. Okay, for he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded, order, commanded who? Our fathers. Okay, you have it there, good. Commanded our fathers that they should make them known to their children. That means it's a commandment, an order for us to do with our children. Continue. Oh, my God. It's like he's talking children. <laughs> okay, okay. You know, children, that the generations to come might know them, even the children which should be born, who should arise and declare them to their children. Children to children. Children to children. Are you seeing this? That they may set their hope in God and not forget the works of God. So God wants you to set, your, God wants your children to set their hopes in him and not in nothing else. Nothing else. He's the one that has a route for them and a destiny. So, when he gets an obstacle in that route, he doesn't want you to put your hope in the best surgeon if the problem is health. He doesn't want you to put your hope in the best lawyer. He doesn't want you to put your hope in the bank. Even though he may lead you to a doctor, he may lead you to a lawyer. He may lead you to a bank. He may lead you. He may lead you. He may lead you. But your hope is that he's the one that leads you. You will not reach for nothing except him. Realizing that he may lead you to something that everybody goes. But it doesn't matter that everybody goes. You are going different. Everybody may just choose and put their hope in the doctor. I want to look for the best doctor. He's the one that has surgery on me. The best doctor. The best, and maybe he's the best doctor, but you are the first guy that's going to die in his hands. <laughs> you are going to allow God to show you what doctor, even though he may lead you to like everybody else, to the first load, uh, doctor, but you know you have not chosen. You have allowed him to direct you because you have, been, you have gone to prayer before you choose. I said you have gone to prayer before you choose. Uh, you hear me over there? I said you are going to go to prayer before you choose. Because if you pray before you choose, you will immediately activate the heavens. You, I mean, you have already said that you belong to God. Oh, my God. You have to, you have to connect everything. If you already said you belong to God, and you know what that means, really, that you are putting the response, you, you are awakening the heavens that God is responsible for you. When the time passes, you have a situation, and you go to God first. He's the one that you have always thought and said that he's responsible for you. He will direct you. And that's why he said you're more than a conqueror. You know that you're more than a conqueror? Do you know you are more than a conqueror? But I have never conquered anything. It doesn't matter. It's what he says, not what is happening. The Bible in Romans 4 says you call things that are not as though they were. Have you ever heard that? Yeah? I'm telling you. You got to call yourself a conqueror, even though you have never conquered anything. As a matter of fact, some of you have been conquered. <laughs> but you're going to say what God says. Because, you see, the Word of God has a power to change things. And then we say, we say, but I'm going to lie. I'm, I cannot lie. I never conquered nothing. Everything has been going bad. You know what I mean? Blah, 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 blah. 
bark and bark and bark. So, you want things change. You must allow it to develop a clash, a collision. Where? Between what's happening and the Word of God. And when that collision or clash happens, God will always win. The situation here is that the collision will not happen unless you activate it with your mouth. Believing in your heart. Are you, are you, I'm here. I don't hear you from you. Say something. Say something. Say amen. Say something. Say I believe. You are the one that activates the clash. That's why you are going to say things even though they may not be happening. How could you say that? Look what's happening. How are you saying con the contrary? I'm saying the contrary because that's what, the, what God is saying. And I want it to clash. The Bible, say, the, 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 the Bible is saying something and the doctor is saying something else. My economy is saying something. Do you know that God says you're rich? Well, some of you say perhaps you haven't even have money for the rent. It doesn't matter. You declare. God says. God says. You have to so make your mind submit. Make your mind submit. It's not just that you are in a positive mind with little birds. You are positive in what if, yes, you're looking at little butterflies, you know what I mean? This is not a time for butterflies. I'm not going to go into that. So it's the time to get in the Word. The Word has the power to change things. But are not going to change nothing. But the Bible says, don't what the Bible says. What do you believe in the Bible? The Bible says many things. And if you don't believe it, it stays there. I thought it was going to happen because I hear that God, the pastor says that God said. It doesn't matter what I say. It's what you believe. It's not even what you want. It's what you believe. Is that right? Who is this? Are you following what I'm saying? 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 So now you are, okay, you, are you more than a conqueror? Say I'm more than a conqueror. I conquer. Say it, I conquer. You must allow the angels to hear you and to be happy and the devil and the demons to hear you and they will get afraid of you because you know you're a conqueror. That means you're going to take things away from him, my God. Man, we don't even, we don't even know who we are yet. It doesn't matter how much we know from God, we don't really know. When we get to heaven, we're going to continue le learning. And we're going to say, my God, if I would have known this when I was on the earth. <laughs> because the ability or the probability of you achieving a level of being a superwoman or a superman, you don't have to fly. <laughs> Just in conquering. It's tremendous. Because the basic, let me say, shh, don't say, a word, don't say a word. The basic for our conquering is that Jesus conquered death. Hi. Say amen, man. Say something. Don't leave me alone here. I say that the basics for you to be a conqueror is because Jesus conquered death. The tomb is empty. I've been there 10 times and I've seen it. I may go the 11th time. I don't know. Well, God has given us order that we may train our children, our generations, with the word, with the word. And uh, even though we train them, there will be problems. There will be adversities that are going to come in our, in our way. But uh, l let me tell you. Just like we have in our physical body an, an immune system. Immune system that will reject germs and bacteria and virus. We have a spiritual immune system. That we strengthen it with the word of God. So what does that mean? Our immune system, a spiritual immune system. So it's a name and giving because it's the word of God that will strengthen our inner man. So it's like an immune system. 
because you are going to be attacked. It doesn't matter how much you are trained or train your children. What are we training for? For them to, our immune system to be strong as when all these situations or attacks may happen. So the stronger you are, the fastest. You're going to react faster or the fastest. You're going to reject whatever comes your way. That's why, uh, uh, let's see, what was this? And this is in James. James 4, right? James 4, 7. What is James 4, 7? You got it there quick? Yeah. Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Now, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Say resist. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Now. When he, why he will flee? Because he has arrived. He cannot flee if he has not arrived. He arrives with whatever he comes, which is no good. But if you, as he arrived, what is your resistance, your level of resistance? Because as you resist it, it says here that he will flee. The point is, how much strength do you have to resist the devil? How much word of God... Do you have in you that you instead of, of declaring, oh, my God, look what's happening to me. What are we going to do? Uh, let's, uh, let's call the, let's, let's quick, where is the pastor? You cannot run to get me. I'm here to teach you. I'm here to pray for you. I'm here to guide you. But when the time comes, maybe I won't be there. We won't be there. You hear what I'm saying? So what does that mean? Your resistance must be at a high level. Because you cannot look for nothing and your hope cannot be in no man or no entity. Your hope is in the one that can really help you, my God. So, adversities are going to come. But how quick will he flee? Some will be one day. Some will be a month. Some will be a year. Some will be ten years. Because the, str the stronger you are, the fastest he will flee from you. And when he flees, he's going to flee with whatever he has brought. Are you following what I'm saying? So, our children, this is, the thing is that you have first to feed yourself, to feed your children. You know what I'm saying? If you don't even know where the book of Mark is, <laughs> is you know, you have to get into the Bible. And you cannot come to church on your Mother's Day. Because if something happens to you, Father's Day, you're in trouble. <laughs> you hear what I'm saying? But no, usually when you come to Mother's Day, you come also for the uh, Easter. You know, today is a month, a year. You got to get the word in you. Because what you're gonna what you're gonna teach your children is what you supposed to be teaching your own self. So you're gonna find out, you're gonna teach your children something that you don't even you're not even ready to do. But you're gonna have to, as you teach them, you receive. Let me tell you something. Many of the things I say up here, I'm teaching myself. And I sometimes rehear what I preach. And we all do that. We all do that. Because there are areas that we know in the Word and that we are de developing them in our lives. So we are, well, as I preach to you what is supposed to be, and the more I tell, repeat this and all that, I am in it. <laughs> Repeating it myself because I want the clash. I want the clash. And I know if I can activate that clash by faith, man, my God will always win. And as he win, I win. And as he win, I win. I win. So the point is here now, our responsibility for our children, for our children, you know, my God. Let me go to uh, Deuteronomy 6. I have something good. Uh, are you getting anything I'm saying? Mo remember, mothers and fathers both have a responsibility of teaching their children. And the teaching is not only the word. It is the word, but it's uh, uh, access of the word and continuation of the word and... Samples of the word, anything, anything, because your teach your children not only are taught by what you're telling them, your children are taught by what they see. You follow that? 
And some of you know that you have left that route because your parents didn't teach you well. Because what you heard in your homes, whatever you heard in your homes, whatever you saw your father do to your mother, because we get to admit, there are some of us that are parents, our father have been animals eating grass. <laughs> but praise God that through the word of God, you know, they are eating the word now. I took my parents, my father and my mother to the Lord here in Miami. But they never talked to me about Jesus. Even though they were good people. But they don't teach you nothing. And uh, now is a time that if you teach them nothing, nothing is equal to bad. Why? Because they are training them. The television is training them. The teachers are training them. The, the telephones are training them. The social media are training them. And the laws of the land are changing and are training them. All right? And look at the problem with the, with the, with the, with the pro-life situation right now. They are afraid. Because you see, the devil is afraid of you. And they have, they have placed in our mind that we have to be afraid of the devil. Don't do that because the devil hears you. I don't give a shoot. <laughs> I got to control myself. I don't care. I want the devil to hear because I know he's afraid of me. And let me tell you, when he attacks you, listen, when he attacks you, it's because he doesn't know everything, but he can smell things. Because he's been on this earth for a long time. But when he knows that a blessing is, let me get to you to get Are you listening to me? You are, uh, say something. Let me start. Come on, say something. When he smells that a blessing is coming to you, a blessing means that you are going to attack him and conquer something that he has. He's afraid of you. That's why he's attacking you first. So that's why, oh my God, this, I, I, I am, God is making me to say things. Go to, go to James, 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 go James again. Follow me, people. My God. This is tremendous. James. James. I gotta look at this. It says, count it all joy. What is that? One, two. My brethren. He's talking to brethren, all those that have Jesus in their hearts. How many here have Jesus in their hearts? And the ones who don't have it can live here with Jesus in your heart. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptation. Now, temptations, listen, the same word in Greek the for temptation is the same test. They are different because the tests are a temptation. Because when the tests come, your faith is tempted to be weakened. You know what I mean? So it's a temptation. Claro, we are tempted to do to sin. We are tempting to sin. So a test comes, and when a test comes, and you don't know why it comes, you start asking God and asking God why, and say, how do you do that? And before you know it, you are blaming God, and whatever is happening, your faith is going lowering, and you are sinning. So test is something that leads you to sin if you don't know how to handle it. We are going to have tents. But it says, count it all joy. What do you mean count it all joy when I'm tempted? Because, people, something big is about to happen and you're being attacked. Oh, my God. You're being attacked because he's afraid of you. Don't you understand? Say amen. amen. Say the devil is afraid of me. And I will count it all joy. Glory to God. Something big is about to happen. And I'm going to declare that the Word of God is greater than whatever is taking place in my life. So whatever is happening with my son, 
I declare the word of God that my offsprings are all blessed. Hallelujah. Something is happening with my economy, my finances. I'm going to declare that he will supply all my needs according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. If something happened with my health, I will declare what he says. I declare what he did. He took my sins and my pains in the cross. Give the Lord a hand of applause.